Chapter Two, Adam, Part Five of the Legends of the Jews, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Brian Ness. The Legends of the Jews, Volume One by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg. Sabbath in Heaven. Before the world was created, there was none to praise God and know Him. Therefore He created the angels and the holy Hayot, the heavens and their host, and Adam as well. They all were to praise and glorify their Creator. During the week of creation, however, there was no suitable time to proclaim the splendor and praise of the Lord. Only on the Sabbath, when all creation rested, the beings on earth and in heaven all together broke into song and adoration, when God ascended his throne and sate upon it. It was the throne of joy upon which he sate, and he had all the angels pass before him, the angel of the water, the angel of the rivers, the angel of the mountains, the angel of the hills, the angel of the abysses, the angel of the deserts, the angel of the sun, the angel of the moon, the angel of the Pleiades, the angel of Orion, the angel of the herbs, the angel of paradise, the angel of Gehenna, the angel of the trees, the angel of the reptiles, the angel of the wild beasts, the angel of the domestic animals, the angel of the fishes, the angel of the locusts, the angel of the birds, the chief angel of the angels, the angel of each heaven, the chief angel of each division of the heavenly hosts, the chief angel of the holy Hayat, the chief angel of the cherubim, the chief angel of the Ophanim, and all the other splendid, terrible, and mighty angel chiefs. They all appeared before God with great joy, laved in a stream of joy, and they rejoiced and danced and sang, and extolled the Lord with many praises and many instruments. The ministering angels began, Let the glory of the Lord endure forever. And the rest of the angels took up the song with the words, Let the Lord rejoice in his works. Arabat, the seventh heaven, was filled with joy and glory, splendor and strength, power and might and pride and magnificence and grandeur, praise and jubilation, song and gladness, steadfastness and righteousness, honor and adoration. Then God bade the angel of the Sabbath seat himself upon a throne of glory, and he brought before him the chiefs of the angels of all the heavens and all the abysses, and bade them dance and rejoice, saying, Sabbath, it is unto the Lord. And the exalted princes of the heavens responded, Unto the Lord it is Sabbath. Even Adam was permitted to ascend to the highest heaven, to take part in the rejoicing over the Sabbath. By bestowing Sabbath joy upon all beings, not excepting Adam, thus did the Lord dedicate his creation. Seeing the majesty of the Sabbath, its honor and greatness, and the joy it conferred upon all, being the fount of all joy, Adam intoned a song of praise for the Sabbath day. Then God said to him, Thou singest a song of praise to the Sabbath day, and singest none to me, the God of the Sabbath? Whereupon the Sabbath rose from his seat, and prostrated himself before God, saying, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And the whole of creation added, And to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. This was the first Sabbath, and this its celebration in heaven by God and the angels. The angels were informed at the same time that in days to come Israel would hallow the day in similar manner. God told them, I will set aside for myself a people from among all the peoples. This people will observe the Sabbath, and I will sanctify it to be my people, and I will be God unto it. From all that I have seen, I have chosen the seed of Israel holy, and I have inscribed him as my firstborn son, and I sanctified him unto myself unto all eternity, him and the Sabbath, that he keep the Sabbath and hallow it from all work. For Adam the Sabbath had a peculiar significance. When he was made to depart out of paradise in the twilight of the Sabbath eve, the angels called after him. Adam did not abide in his glory overnight. Then the Sabbath appeared before God as Adam's defender, and he spoke, 
O Lord of the world, during the six working days no creature was slain. If thou wilt begin now by slaying Adam, what will become of the sanctity and the blessing of the Sabbath? In this way Adam was rescued from the fires of hell, the meet punishment for his sins, and in gratitude he composed a psalm in honor of the Sabbath, which David later embodied in his Psalter. Still another opportunity was given to Adam to learn and appreciate the value of the Sabbath, the celestial light whereby Adam could survey the world from end to end, should properly have been made to disappear immediately after his sin. But out of consideration for the Sabbath, God had let this light continue to shine, and the angels at sundown on the sixth day intoned a song of praise and thanksgiving to God for the radiant light shining through the night. Only with the going out of the Sabbath day the celestial light ceased, to the consternation of Adam, who feared that the serpent would attack him in the dark. But God illumined his understanding, and he learned to rub two stones against each other and produce light for his needs. The celestial light was but one of the seven precious gifts enjoyed by Adam before the fall, and to be granted to man again only in the messianic time. The others are the resplendence of his countenance, life eternal, his tall stature, the fruits of the soil, the fruits of the tree, and the luminaries of the sky, the sun and the moon, for in the world to come the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg, Adam's Repentance Cast out of paradise, Adam and Eve built a hut for themselves, and for seven days they sat in it in great distress, mourning and lamenting. At the end of the seven days, tormented by hunger, they came forth and sought food. For seven other days Adam journeyed up and down in the land, looking for such dainties as he had enjoyed in paradise. In vain, he found nothing. Then Eve spoke to her husband, My lord, if it please thee, slay me. Mayhap God will then take thee back into paradise, for the Lord God became wroth with thee only on account of me. But Adam rejected her plan with abhorrence, and both went forth again in the search for food. Nine days passed, and still they found naught resembling what they had had in paradise. They saw only food fit for cattle and beasts. Then Adam proposed, let us do penance. Mayhap the Lord God will forgive us and have pity on us, and give us something to sustain our life. Knowing that Eve was not vigorous enough to undergo the mortification of the flesh which he proposed to inflict upon himself, he prescribed a penance for her different from his own. He said to her, Arise and go to the Tigris, take a stone and stand upon it in the deepest part of the river, where the water will reach as high as thy neck and let no speech issue forth from thy mouth, for we are unworthy to supplicate God. Our lips are unclean by reason of the forbidden fruit of the tree. Remain in the water for thirty-seven days. For himself Adam ordained forty days of fasting, while he stood in the river Jordan, in the same way as Eve was to take up her stand in the water of the Tigris. After he had adjusted the stone in the middle of the Jordan, and mounted it, with the water surging up to his neck, he said, I adjure thee, O thou water of the Jordan, afflict thyself with me, and gather unto me all swimming creatures that live in thee. Let them surround me, and sorrow with me, and let them not beat their own breasts with grief, but let them beat me. Not they have sinned, only I alone." Very soon they all came, the dwellers in the Jordan, and they encompassed him, and from that moment the water of the Jordan stood still and ceased from flowing. The penance which Adam and Eve laid upon themselves awakened misgivings in Satan. He feared God might forgive their sin, and therefore essayed to hinder Eve in her purpose. After a lapse of eighteen days he appeared unto her in the guise of an angel, as though in distress on account of her, he began to cry, saying, Step up out of the river, and weep no longer. The Lord God hath heard your mourning, and your penitence hath been accepted by him. All the angels supplicated the Lord in your behalf, and he hath sent me to fetch you out of the water, and give you the sustenance that you enjoyed in paradise, and for which you have been mourning. 
Enfeebled as she was by her penances and mortifications, Eve yielded to the solicitations of Satan, and he led her to where her husband was. Adam recognized him at once, and amid tears he cried out, O oh, Eve, Eve, where now is thy penitence? How couldst thou let our adversary seduce thee again, him who robbed us of our sojourn in paradise and all spiritual joy? Thereupon Eve, too, began to weep and cry out, Woe unto thee, O Satan! Why strivest thou against us without any reason? What have we done unto thee that thou shouldst pursue us so craftily? With a deep-fetched sigh, Satan told them how that Adam, of whom he had been jealous, had been the real reason of his fall. Having lost his glory through him, he had intrigued to have him driven from paradise. When Adam heard the confession of Satan, he prayed to God, O Lord my God, in thy hands is my life. Remove from me this adversary who seeks to deliver my soul to destruction, and grant me the glory he has forfeited. Satan disappeared forthwith, but Adam continued his penance, standing in the waters of the Jordan for forty days. While Adam stood in the river, he noticed that the days were growing shorter, and he feared the world might be darkened on account of his sin, and go under soon. To avert the doom, he spent eight days in prayer and fasting. But after the winter solstice, when he saw that the days grew longer again, he spent eight days in rejoicing, and in the following year he celebrated both periods, the one before and the one after the solstice. This is why the heathen celebrate the Calends and the Saturnalia in honor of their gods, though Adam had consecrated those days to the honor of God. The first time Adam witnessed the sinking of the sun, he was also seized with anxious fears. It happened at the conclusion of the Sabbath, and Adam said, Woe is me for my sake, because I have sinned. The world is darkened, and it will again become void and without form. Thus will be executed the punishment of death which God has pronounced against me. All the night he spent in tears, and Eve, too, wept as she sat opposite to him. When day began to dawn, he understood that what he had deplored was but the course of nature, and he brought an offering unto God, a unicorn, whose horn was created before his hoofs, and he sacrificed it on the spot on which later the altar was to stand in Jerusalem. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg, The Book of Raziel After Adam's expulsion from paradise, he prayed to God in these words, O God, Lord of the world, Thou didst create the whole world unto the honor and glory of the Mighty One, and Thou didst as was pleasing unto Thee. Thy kingdom is unto all eternity, and Thy reign unto all generations. Naught is hidden from Thee, and naught is concealed from Thine eyes. Thou didst create me as Thy handiwork, and didst make me the ruler over Thy creatures, that I might be the chief of Thy works. But the cunning, accursed serpent seduced me with the tree of desire and lusts, yea, he seduced the wife of my bosom. But thou didst not make known unto me what shall befall my children, and the generations after me. I know well that no human being can be righteous in thine eyes, and what is my strength that I should step before thee with an impudent face? I have no mouth wherewith to speak, and no eye wherewith to see, for I did sin and commit a trespass, and by reason of my sins I was driven forth from paradise. I must plough the earth whence I was taken, and the other inhabitants of the earth, the beasts, no longer, as once, stand in awe and fear of me. From the time I ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, wisdom departed from me, and I am a fool that knoweth not, an ignorant man that understandeth not. Now, O merciful and gracious God, I pray to thee to turn again thy compassion to the head of thy works, to the spirit which thou didst instill into him, and the soul thou didst breathe into him. Meet me with thy grace, for thou art gracious, slow to anger, and full of love. O oh, that my prayer would reach unto the throne of thy glory, and my supplication unto the throne of thy mercy, and thou wouldst incline to me with loving kindness. May the words of my mouth be acceptable, that thou turn not away from my petition. Thou wert from everlasting, and thou wilt be unto everlasting. Thou wert king, and thou wilt ever be king. 
Now have thou mercy upon the work of thy hands. Grant me knowledge and understanding, that I may know what shall befall me, and my posterity, and all the generations that come after me, and what shall befall me on every day, and in every month, and mayest thou not withhold from me the help of thy servants and of thy angels. On the third day after he had offered up this prayer, while he was sitting on the banks of the river that flows forth out of paradise, there appeared to him in the heat of the day the angel Raziel, bearing a book in his hand. The angel addressed Adam thus, O Adam, why art thou so faint-hearted? Why art thou distressed and anxious? Thy words were heard at the moment when thou didst utter thy supplication and entreaties, and I have received the charge to teach thee pure words and deep understanding, to make thee wise through the contents of the sacred book in my hand, to know what will happen to thee until the day of thy death. And all thy descendants and all the later generations, if they will but read this book in purity, with a devout heart and a humble mind, and obey its precepts, will become like unto thee. They too will foreknow what things shall happen, and in what month, and on what day, or in what night, all will be manifest to them. They will know and understand whether a calamity will come, a famine or wild beasts, floods or drought, whether there will be abundant grain or dearth, whether the wicked will rule the world, whether locusts will devastate the land, whether the fruits will drop from the trees unripe, whether boils will afflict men, whether wars will prevail or diseases or plagues among men and cattle, whether good is resolved upon in heaven or evil, whether blood will flow and the death-rattle of the slain be heard in the city, and now, Adam, come, and give heed unto what I shall tell thee regarding the manner of this book and its holiness. Raziel the angel then read from the book, and when Adam heard the words of the holy volume as they issued from the mouth of the angel, he fell down affrighted, but the angel encouraged him. Arise, Adam, he said, be of good courage, be not afraid. Take the book from me, and keep it, for thou wilt draw knowledge from it thyself, and become wise, and thou wilt also teach its contents to all those who shall be found worthy of knowing what it contains. In the moment when Adam took the book, a flame of fire shot up from near the river, and the angel rose heavenward with it. Then Adam knew that he who had spoken to him was an angel of God, and it was from the holy king himself that the book had come, and he used it in holiness and purity. It is the book out of which all things worth knowing can be learnt, and all mysteries, and it teaches also how to call upon the angels, and make them appear before men, and answer all their questions. But not all alike can use the book, only he who is wise and God-fearing, and resorts to it in holiness. Such an one is secure against all wicked counsels, his life is serene, and when death takes him from this world he finds repose in a place where there are neither demons nor evil spirits, and out of the hands of the wicked he is quickly rescued. End of chapter 2, part 5 Recorded by Brian Ness